Hi, my name is Aaron with Ag Diesel Solutions. We're down here in southern Indiana today getting ready to do a field install on a customer's John Deere S680 combine. This is a class 8 uh, machine here. Uh, this machine in particular has got the 13.5 liter PowerTech uh, John Deere engine. We'll be doing an ejector driver module install and the part number for that is HP9040. Uh, this module itself will have three different settings. It'll have stock, 15% and 30% over uh, stock horsepower. Uh, so with that being said, just to touch base on a few things, uh, always make sure that during this process that the batteries are turned off. This just ensures uh, the safety of you and the safety of the machine itself. Also be sure that when plugging all the connectors in from the module to the factory locations that they are tight, uh, they are conceived or concealed uh, away from any moving parts, anything that includes high heat. Uh, we won't want to damage the module. This may affect the machine, if so, if not the performance of the module itself. So stay tuned and we're going to show you a step-by-step -step video on how to install it properly and get you the best bang for your buck. In your install instructions, it first tells you to start off with your fuel injector connectors. Now, I know this shows it in your installation uh, instructions on a John Deere full drive tractor, but it's the same principle as the same engine. On the back right-hand side of the engine, you're going to find two injector con connections. The top one is going to be a 6-pin, the bottom is going to be an 8-pin. Now all you have to do to remove these is just take a flathead screwdriver or something small. Uh, you can get in on the bottom side of these clips here. It will release that and you just pull them out. And then what you do is, on our harness you also see we have 6 and 8 pin connectors here. And you simply take the female ends of our harness and plug them in where the factory connections were. And be sure that when you plug in any connection, whether it be the map sensor or the fuel injector connectors, that you hear a click. That means that it's secured properly. If you don't hear a click, you might want to go back and check it, tug on it a time or two, and that will tell you uh, whether you're good to go. So following, take the 8-pin female from our harness, plug it into the bottom side, and that will leave you two male ends on our harness. So you just take the factory connections and plug them into those, keep everything in line and flush. So proper communication can be received from the module. We're going to move on next to the map sensor plug installation. Uh, as you'll find also in the manual, that is on the opposite side of the engine compared to where the fuel injector connections are at. Uh, this is a three-pin style connector. I know that it says on the tractors in specific you're going to have two separate connections with that being on the bottom. On the combines, there's solely one connection that you're going to have to worry about. So you're not going to have to worry about on the combines getting those two connections mixed up by any means. And that's the same style of connection. All you do is take a flathead screwdriver and pop that tab up. You take the three pin female end on our harness and you plug it into the existing location on the combine itself. We heard a snap, that's good to go. And then we're gonna take our female coming from the combine itself to plug into the male on our harness. Another thing I wanted to touch base on too, as you can see uh, from several field installations, we found it a lot easier to take your unloading auger and move it out. That's going to give you more room to walk around the engine, uh, better visibility and better maneuverability during the installation. So just want to touch base on that. It might help you guys out in the field wherever you may be. Next we're going to move on to the power and ground. And as stated in your installation instructions, you want to go to your starter for this. Of course, remove your two 18 millimeter nuts. For us, we're going to take a 3 8 drive ratchet and socket to remove these nuts um, and of course your terminal slide right over the post on the starter make sure those are in proper uh, place they're not wedged uh, the terminals aren't distressed and the wires aren't distressed by any means this might cause a faulty connection if so uh, just be sure to torque them back up to factory specs you don't want to over torque them and you don't want to leave them too loose uh, so we're going to go ahead as you can see not much torque on them Pretty well, just a slight pull of your hand, and they come loose with a sock and a ratchet. Now that we have the power and ground installed, we're going to run and hook the module up itself uh, in the final step. Beans are given a long amount of harness here. We're going to put the module back on the front side of the engine where we originally started, uh, right behind the door which accesses to the engine compartment. Uh, this is just going to make it more convenient for you to change settings if need be, and it's also going to keep it away from the outside elements. So as you can see here, we're going to mount it somewhere up high, kind of away from the block itself, maybe above this EGR cooler. We're going to put it right here, of course. Uh, you can use your included uh, zip ties to uh, zip tie the harness up and zip tie the module up itself. Um, 
or you can do whatever is most convenient. If you decide to screw it to a panel, you can, but as I said, we include the factory zip ties uh, for easy accessibility to anything that a zip tie can get to and around the module. So. We've just concluded the install on the John Deere S680 combine with our HP 9040 module. As you can see, we've got everything zip tied up in a good location. Uh, the wiring harness isn't loose. Uh, we've got good power, got good ground. It's in a good location. Uh, we set this module on 30%, which is what we recommend. Uh, just be sure that when you do install it, make sure it's at least on 15 or 30%. We recommend 30% to get your best value for your performance and your fuel efficiency of your machine. This is going to optimize your profit and uh, functionality of the machine as well. Um, we thank you for joining us. As you can see, this was a pretty quick and simple install. Uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, www.agusesolutions.com. Uh, we thank you for joining us uh, another again. And uh, remember to farm smart, farm efficient, farm with Agusa Solutions. Thanks and have a good day.